What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Shani Misumi and I help students optimize their medical school application to increase their chances of being accepted into medical school. And in today's video, we're going to talk about what I wish I knew before starting medical school. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button so that you don't miss a video. So this is part one of a three part series and in today's video we're specifically going to talk about study resources, study habits, and things that people don't tell you about when you're a medical student and you have to take board exams. Oh my god, so this video is super important especially for my followers and subscribers who do not have friends, family, mentors, advisors that can tell you what you should do and how you should best prepare for medical school and even while in medical school. There are several things that I learned during the process and I was honestly maybe a little too late um, to some of those things because I didn't understand how it could affect my medical school education and potentially affect my future as a physician. So the first thing I wish I knew before starting medical school are the most popular and most common study resources. So you think that you're gonna be able to go to medical school and kind of treat it how you treat college, which is, you know, uh, going to class, taking notes, maybe using the notes that may be distributed from the professor, like a slideshow or PowerPoint presentation or something like that. Um, and then maybe some supplemental reading from a textbook and you're gonna pass the class. Um, that is not true of medical school, simply because there is so much information to learn in such a short amount of time and you really have to like program your brain to be able to retain and that is where the outside resources come in handy is for retention um, not necessarily to teach you something that the professors at your medical school isn't already sharing with you or to teach you something that is not in a textbook. All the information is there and the same across the board for the most part. It's just a matter of retaining the information in order to do well on exams initially, but also to be able to keep that knowledge in the back of your mind so that you are a good physician at the end of the day. So some resources that I did not know about when I started medical school are uh, Picmonic and Sketchy Micro. These two resources are particularly used for microbiology. It's a really creative way to help you remember those microorganisms. So what I did was I actually studied the syllabus that was provided to us uh, by our professors and I did well in the class but retention, I struggled. So when it came time to take step one or to take any board exam that talked about certain microbiology topics and how they're treated or what the classical symptom was or sign, um, I really struggled there because I was not able to remember everything that I had learned during my microbiology course. As speaking of resources, it brings me to my number two of what I wish I knew before starting medical school, which is the use of question banks early on. So obviously when studying for the MCAT, you know you have to review your practice questions and understand why B was the answer as well as why A, C, and D was not the answer. So we all kind of get that practice with the MCAT, but when it comes to medical school, I believe that doing practice questions was a huge factor for me on my board's exams when it came to step one and step two. So one thing that I didn't know or no one kind of laced me up or <laughs> told me the game about uh, preparing for step one is to start doing practice questions months before the exam. I started my practice questions maybe a month to a month and a half before the exam, which obviously was not enough for me because I did not score as well as I would have liked to. And again, it came down to retention and being able to hold all the knowledge and um, you know just seeing it over and over and over and over and over. Because when you're studying, you're you're looking at things, you're reading things, you're looking at diagrams, and pictures and say, oh yeah, that makes sense. I understand it, I know it. But if you do that for 10 million topics, five million or even seven million, you're gonna forget, right? So it comes down to doing those practice questions over and over and over and over and over and 
ultimately having time to do it over and over and over and over and over. Now with that being said, I know that step one is moving to pass fail, but I hope that you guys aren't feeling like, okay, since it's pass fail and we don't have to, uh, you know, outdo anybody, so to speak, in order to be competitive. I don't want you guys to feel like you don't need to put that time in because there are some students who still did not pass step one. So don't think that you just get to relax because you don't get a skill score anymore. Uh, please put in the time and start early. So number three, note taking and making flashcards. Uh, so I was huge on attending class in person. Um, I write out notes. I still have my syllabi from medical school where I have like notes all over my book, written out, highlighted, color coded, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that it worked for the exam. Again, it worked well for me to score well on the exam at that time. But when it comes to retention and being able to remember everything that you need to know, like now on throughout my career, um, I definitely recommend making flashcards using the sources like Anki Deck and Quizlet or things like that to kind of store all your information in an um, electronic uh, fashion so that you can always refer back to it. And when you're like on um, a little break and you're not necessarily having to study and you wanna just kind of refresh your memory over the adrenal glands, you can always go back to that specific flashcard deck and look through your flashcards and quiz yourself or just familiarize yourself with things that you might have forgotten. Um, the thing is, is that even though you take step one, you take step two, step three, you get into your specialty and you take ITEs, that stuff like comes back up eventually. And if it doesn't necessarily come back up, it's definitely a, a, a foundation knowledge that you need to know in order to understand what, what you are currently learning or being tested over. I would say even as an anesthesia resident right now, I wish I would have did this. I actually did it for my basic exam that I just took uh, last year in June. Um, so now when I go to take my entry exam, um, all the things that were on basic could pop up on my entry exam. So I still have all of those flashcards that I made that I could just run through without going back to the books, without reading notes and reading chapters, things like that. They're already ready for me. And so I definitely think it would have paid off if I would have did the same thing in medical school, preparing for step one, step two, my shelf exams, whatever it may have been. And that brings me to point number four, definitely developing good study habits. Um, I think before I started medical school, like I knew that it was gonna be very, very challenging, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to go to medical school in the first place, was to challenge myself and to see how far I could actually go, like educationally. Uh, so I knew it was gonna be a lot, and I knew I was gonna have to study all the time, but I did not develop good study habits in college that I would be ready to implement in medical school. I had to develop them in medical school while I was trying to pass classes. And so as a result of that, I did not do well on one of my exams um, starting off. And in my defense, more than half my class didn't do well on that exam either. So, hey. <laughs> but anyway, point is, is that if I would have had better study habits and techniques, I would have probably done much, much better starting off and it wouldn't have affected my uh, overall score at the end of the semester. So I know you guys always ask like, what can I do now to prepare for medical school? That is probably one of the number one things you could do now in high school, in college as a pre-med, whatever you're doing right now. If you're planning to go to medical school, developing good study habits and study discipline um, and, and knowing how to stay organized, having a study schedule or something like that is super important. And no one can do that for you. It's all up to you. You can't pay me, you can't pay any other advisor, you can't pay any of these question bank companies to do the studying for you and to stay on schedule. That is something that you have to develop. And the quicker you develop it, the better off you'll do in medical school. And the last thing I wish I knew before starting medical school is when you actually take the board's exams and how much they cost. <laughs> because once you get through MCAT, and even the MCAT is like 300 or something dollars, if you don't get the fee reduced, um, you pay like 300 something dollars every time you take the test. And then that's just the MCAT. It doesn't, you know, um, include what you have to spend on MCAT preparation, right? All of the different practice tests that you have to buy and uh, if you're gonna participate in a course, things like that. It's the same thing for the boys' exams in medical school. So I wish I would have known 
how much those exams cost, uh, how much the prep material cost that could have like prepared financially. Um, because I did not know, I kind of had to wait um, a little bit before I purchased my UWorld question bank, which is why I didn't start super early in the semester. I simply didn't have the money um, to pay for it. So that is something that I would like to let you guys know. Please be aware of the different exams, when you take them, how much they cost, how to sign up, things like that, because it'll definitely help you out and um, it'll allow you to effectively create a study schedule based on when test day it is, what you have to pay for, how soon you have to pay for it, when you need to start preparing, and blah. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Um, be on the lookout for part two. It'll be released next week. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. DM me on Instagram. The best way to contact me is by email. Hope this was helpful. You guys have a great day.